Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's video newsletter, well, we're going to talk about the clients that tell me I can't use DOE because my process is more complicated than that. And I'm going to uh, explain to you why the simplest DOEs will explain the most complicated situations. So we're going to cover that subject today. Before I do, of course, I'm just going to remind you, latest book is out, um, Statistical Process Control for Small Batch Production. You can get this from lulu.com. The link is in the uh, description below. Uh, if you'd like more information about Design of Experiments, which is what I'm talking about now, this is the book you want. It's a practical book. It's not a mathematical book. It is a practical book of how to get DOE to get more knowledge and make more money. It's called Design of Experiments for 21st Century Engineers. The link to lulu.com is in the description below. And finally, if you are a Six Sigma black belt or green belt and you really want some advice on how to use what you've learned and save your organization, pots and pots of cash, Drink Tea and Read the Paper is the book that you need, also available from lulu.com. So let's get into talking about design of experiments. So, my process. My process is too complicated. If I had a pound I had a pound for every time I hear this when I'm talking about DOE. I'd be a very rich man. Okay, now then. Here's a statement that's a little bit contrary. Your processes are simple and complicated at the same time. So, and I'm going to explain what that means for you now. The reason why people think that process is too complicated. If you do two level full factorials, people say, okay, what does two level mean, Paul? Well, it means we test. We test at the low, we test at the high, minus one, plus one. And we expect that the relationship is linear. And of course, when you see that as a as a just a straight two-dimensional drawing, you go, well, if my process was that simple, I'd have understood it. We'd have collected the data, we'd have understood that relationship, we'd have, we'd have put the parameters in the right place, we'd have set all the inputs correctly and we'd be making pots of money and we wouldn't have a problem. So my process can't be that simple, it's more complicated than that. But the reason why you think that is because you're seeing this as a two-dimensional drawing on a piece of paper. But this thing this two level four factorial is so much more complicated than that when you start to add two, three, four, five, six variables. So let me show you um, that's obviously one factor. That's a one factor drawing. Let me try and draw it as a three dimensional problem for you. So this is factor A, tested low and high. This is factor B, you've tested low and high. This is factor C, you've tested low and high. Let's finish the box off. Okay. Now we still have a linear, we still have a linear relationship. So the way to think about the linear relationship, which is one of my books to do this, 
is think of it like a plane now going through the center of that box so you can still think of this like this and you start to go oh, okay well that's still that's still relatively that's still relatively simple so that's three dimensions but let me show you what happens when you go to six dimensions and what starts to happen to this plane and how complicated a linear model really is. So people think the linear model is too simple, it's just straight. I, I, would have, I would have understood this. It can't be that simple. But let me show you, look. Here's a video, look. It's gonna draw a six dimensional box for you. You can see that at the moment, we're just doing one dimension. Then it opens up into a square. You get two dimensions. Then it opens up into a box and we get three dimensions. The three dimensions that I've drawn on the board. And then things start to get weird because now we get the fourth dimension. And the, suddenly this thing starts to get complicated. The fifth dimension and now think about this it's tumbling that plane that plane that we said was through the box it's tumbling that plane through space in a totally complex pattern now that is a six dimensional design space what does that mean it means you had six inputs to your process you had six dials time temperature pressure angle etc that you played with you you were able to play with six settings on your process that's a six dimensional design space so what was that doing to that plane so initially we had a plane and we said well the plane is very simple but now assume that that plane had been inside that box and now that plane is tumbling like this in space describing circles and all kinds of complexity my process is too complicated for a linear model. No, it isn't. The, it's too complicated for you to understand in your head. Correct. But that's why we don't understand models in our head. You can't carry that maths in your head. You couldn't carry the answer to that six dimensional design space in your head. When this plane starts to tumble in space, a straight linear model is simple but once you turn it once you turn it in space which is what your process does then it becomes super complicated now don't get me wrong sometimes these relationships cause on straight they're curved and then by the way what have you got here well now what you've got is a curved plane so maybe it looks like this. Maybe you've got a plane that looks like that. And now that tumbles in space. That's going to be super complicated, isn't it? Even more complicated. Okay, what do you do then? You do three level designs. But the maths, the linear maths, and also the quadratic maths, that is involved in a designed experiment that comes out of the regression analysis is complicated. I know when we draw it, it seems simple, but that's because we can't draw six dimensional shapes on a flip chart. But the two level and the three level DOEs, I've never found, by the way, in 25 years, I've never found that they cannot describe the problem that I'm looking at, especially when it's physics. Chemistry is a bit more tricky, but when it's physics, I've never found that these things can't do the job. So if you've been on one of my classes, or you've watched any of the videos, or you've read any books, and you think, no, nah, no, my process is more complicated than that. No, it isn't. The DOE describes the complexity. Do the DOE, get the knowledge, learn how to hit targets, 
that none of your competition can hit and make bucket loads of money. Use DOE to describe your complexity.